think, it's, uh, I think on this planet we're kind of stuck. With the yeah. laws of physics. There's a lot of magical thinking around. You know? No, no, and I'm all in favor of magical thinking, but you know. But I know that I drive this car without petroleum now, and it's not magic. Uh, Did you just get this? Or, um, I've had it for years. Oh. Did you build this? No, Toyota no, built Do you have any idea what they're worth now? Yeah. I could, well, I mean, you know, it's all I've, I've free seen, market. Huh? $50,000. You think you can sell it for that? Oh, I know I can sell it. 60. 50? 60. Absolutely 50. I, I see them uh, between see 35 shirt? and yeah. 65. I've even heard 70. The, the most mm -hmm. anyone sold for that I know of was 67. Yeah, on eBay. I saw that one. But eBay, eBay can get crazy, so it's hard to make but a the market guy did eBay. Buy, No, 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 but it, you know, it gives you an idea of what the market price is. And, you know, that guy did buy it for $67,000. I know the guy, so, I mean, it's real. Yeah, but that's only one sale. Right, no, I, and I'm not suggesting, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I wish the car was worth 20 You know, I mean, it's, as much as it's wonderful for me that this car is worth more than I paid for it, I wish it was worth less because there were so many cars that it was, you know, not worth as much. I, I read you get about a hundred miles range. Yeah, well, over, definitely over a hundred miles. I mean, I've driven. So why did the uh, Toyota pull the plug on this? Because it was not in their. They decided it was not in their business interest to make the cars. I mean, it's obvious. Have you seen the movie Who Killed the Electric Car? Check I out the movie. I did, you know, and I. I it's a complicated. I, it's very complicated. I, I didn't buy it entirely, uh, you know, like all the conspiracy part. No, 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 but there was no conspiracy. The, co the movie did not even suggest a conspiracy. All the movie said was that there's a lot of variables as to why these cars were yanked. One of them is that the California Air Resources Board, which demanded the cars originally, ultimately decided... They pulled their support. They, well, when the car companies sued, they didn't countersue. Okay? Car companies sued... A federal court made a ruling, I think an incorrect ruling, as to what... I mean, it's very complicated stuff. It's really complicated. It but it's not about a conspiracy. It's about a commonality of interests of oil companies, car companies, the government. I mean, a lot of different parts went into the, into the ultimate fact that you can't today walk in and buy an electric car. And the point is, it's not... None of it is technological. I mean, it's not because the cars didn't work. It's not because consumers wouldn't buy them. It's it's not for any. Ah, that's that was my my beef with the movie. I don't think it laid enough blame on the fact that many consumers will come up to a car like this and rave about it, uh -huh. and you say, okay, pull out your checkbook. But they, they, but the, and that's when they freeze. No, but the proof is in the pudding. California demanded that they make cars. They made the number of cars California demanded, which was about 6,000. Every one of those cars was leased or sold, and there were waiting lists for more. Yes, but they, they were leased under an artificial cost. In other really? words, if you had to go out and buy what it was You buy free, gas at an artificial cost. Every, there's no free market in this country in anything. True, so it's, so true. the fact that California was, it was subsidized... A subsidized... Well, was it, is it, it was subsidized. Should it have been subsidized? That's now. That's you're deflecting my point. No, no, no. But, uh, but but my good, point is, people weren't people weren't leasing or buying sure, the cars be because they were so cheap. They weren't so cheap. They were still expensive. It still cost people more than buy, buying or leasing a gasoline car. The people who leased those cars did it because they wanted to. They, you know. Right, and they represent a very fractional element of, a, of, a, of the whole market. But that doesn't answer the question as to why they were unwilling to meet that market. I don't really know. If someone asked me one answer, you know, one facile flip answer, yeah. I say, I, I can't really pin it down. Why were well, they unwilling to meet that market? Well, it's, a, it's complicated. If anyone wants uh, information, here we go. That goes back to the court case, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that car companies made the very logical business decision that in the short term, it was not in their interest to offer consumers choice. That's what I believe. I believe they made the absolute, from a narrow business point of view, decision, it is not in our interest as car companies to offer consumers an, an option of a non-petroleum car. Why? Because if we're going to make small numbers of cars that we are going to try and convince people they don't really want, it's going to be more expensive and we'll make less profit on each car. So every electric car we make will essentially not necessarily cost them money, but it's profit 
um, you know, that they're not making because... They're kind of splitting their own profits. Bingo. Yeah. And I think they knew what I found out, which is that once you drive an electric car, you would rather drive an electric car. Oh, really? Not because some highfalutin reason, because it's a nicer experience. I've driven them there. It's incredible. What makes them nicer? There's no vibration. There's no noise. Um, I mean, that's basically why the drive is better. Great acceleration. Great. Oh, yeah. They're quicker than a, than a gas car. Because you get, it, you get all your torque that's right at zero. Exactly. <laughs> In other words, for a gasoline engine, before you get your maximum horsepower, you have to rev them up. But an electric car. It's a phenomenal experience. How I much? Mean, what was it? What's your typical electricity bill for? Uh, can you put it well, out in terms of? Uh, I mean, to fill this car on PG&E would cost you two or three dollars. Two or three dollars yeah, for a how much? Yeah. A couple of hundred. For a hundred miles. A hundred miles. Hundred hundred. Two or three dollars. Yeah. But what happens to people, mm -hmm. and happened to me, and has happened to half the people, mm -hmm. excuse me, who um, have or had electric cars, and once you have an electric car, you go, oh, I could make electricity. I mean, you can never make gasoline. Mm. You know, you're not going to be able to dig your own well. But put solar panels on your house, and bingo, you're producing your own power. So suddenly, the thought of making your own power for your house, which maybe wasn't so cost effective, suddenly, if you're supplanting your gasoline with electricity you made, the payback on the solar system you invest ten or twenty thousand dollars in yeah. happens much more quickly. Wow. So yeah. it's like you end up with this closed loop that's truly clean. Wow. That's truly zero emissions. Right, you're a little I mean, you, more off the grid. Wow. You're not off the grid. I mean, a little you want more. You to plug in PG&E and sell them back your excess. Well, yeah, I mean, essentially what you do is you make power during the day. So you don't even need they, neighbors. You power the, you know, you send some of it to the grid. You get credit on the grid for the power you produce during the day. And then you draw power from the grid at night. And the electric company is willing to sell you power at night very, very cheaply. Really? Because there's so much extra power at night that they there's so much excess capacity that the Department of Energy, the U.S. Department of Energy, no friend of environmentalists at this point, has recognized that if 80% of the cars became plug-in hybrid cars, wow. you would not need to build a single additional electric plant. Wow, that is because cool. you got to understand, we make electricity plants, you know, generating capacity for what we need late in the afternoon on a hot summer day when everyone turns on their air conditioner and all the factories are working. Okay? Well, that's a lot more electricity than we use at night when we're sleeping. We're not generating that much all the time. They, 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 they power up and power down. They, to the extent they can. Yeah. But they literally at night, they throw power away. Yeah. But literally. I don't ever remember seeing on my bill where it says, after nine, yeah. these are the rates. The, only if you get a time of use meter. Oh, really? Because yeah. what, you, what they presume you want is a consistent cost of power. So the only change in electricity that you pay for today is if you use a lot of power, they have tiers. So that after you use, you know, X kilowatt hours, I can't remember what it is, you pay more. Right. Okay? Well, another thing that you can do, and you have the right to do it today, is go on a time of use meter. And what that's saying is, I'll pay, I'm giving rough numbers, sure, okay? Sure. I'll pay three times more for electricity between noon and six if you'll give me power the other 18 hours of the day at half price. And once you have a solar system on your house, it really makes sense because you're not going to pay most days for power between 12 and 6. You've got you're going to generate right. an excess. And they're going to give you credit at the three times rate. <clears throat> oh, really? That's what, I, that's what we do now. That's why solar works. That's why it makes sense for people to put solar. And if you have a car, then it really makes sense. Yeah. Because then you're using a lot of power at night. Do you have a car? I wow. do. Is Greg around?